If you watch this video till the end, you might become the first rich person in your family because I'm going to share some very important lessons. Let me ask you a question. Do you want to be successful in life? Learning to be successful is similar to learning subjects like math, chemistry, or biology. As you learn these subjects, you can also learn to be successful, which is different from just succeeding. Being successful is one thing, but succeeding is another. For instance, a soccer player might be great at soccer and have lots of wins, but if you look at his personal life, it's a mess. He's successful in soccer, but not in life. To be successful in life, you need to work on many areas, like your personal, professional, financial, family, social, and friendship sides. This is the big difference between success and being successful. What are you looking for? Do you want success in one particular area, or do you want overall success? Leave your comment. In addition, if you want to succeed, watch this video to the end for some great advice. Let's return to our discussion. You might think you need to be born rich to succeed. No, not at all. On the contrary, many people who are considered successful in life generally had tough childhoods. In Brazil, 85% of people who see themselves as successful come from simple backgrounds. They started with regular jobs and faced many hardships. So, you aren't stuck being who you've always been. Your past is gone and you can't change that. But your future isn't written yet. You can start writing it today. If you grasp this, it will make a huge difference in your life. Simply because you understand this view of tomorrow. Remember, humans are the only creatures on earth with the ability to start over. It doesn't matter where you were born, how you were raised, or what you did or didn't do till now. Tomorrow, you can open a new book and start the first page. This is called transcending. But first, we need to make some changes. You know what I mean? A set of beliefs guides our actions, and these beliefs are based on what we think is true. Often, these beliefs are not helpful. They don't bring us the results we want. A belief is outdated when it doesn't help us grow. So let's get rid of the outdated beliefs that are not bringing us the results we want. We don't need to invent something new. The secret here is to make it work better and faster. Others have already studied this, looked into the lives of millionaires and successful people, not just in money but in family and health and found common habits among successful people. So, do you want to move towards success? I want to know where you are starting from. If you don't know where you're starting from, it's nearly impossible to reach the success you want. So the first thing we need to figure out is your level of self-confidence. I'm going to ask some simple questions here. For five areas of your life, health, family, finances, professional life, and friendships, you will give a score from one to 10. Then we'll add these scores up and see what that tells us. Let's start with your health. There are people who are 30 and never get sick, right? And then there are people who are sick every day. So you need to rate your health. If you're always healthy, give yourself a 10. If you're sick every day, give yourself a 1. Choose the score you think you deserve. Now, how would you rate your health? Next, let's talk about your family. When I say family, I mean your immediate family, parents, children, siblings, in-laws, the whole group. From 1 to 10, what score would you give? If you think your family is perfect and wouldn't change a thing, then it's a 10. You first rated your health, now rate your family. Next comes your financial life. How is your bank account? If you lost your job today, how long could you maintain your current lifestyle? This is known as an emergency fund. It's the number of days you can keep living your current lifestyle if you stop earning money. If you can stop working today and have your savings or investments support you, you deserve a high score. But if you are in debt and spending more than you earn, give yourself a low score. You choose the score, just like you did for your health and family. Now, consider your professional life. Here's a simple question. If you won a million dollars tomorrow, would you continue doing the same job the day after? If so, you're completely satisfied with your job and deserve a 10. If you're counting the days until retirement because you're unhappy, you deserve a low score. We've looked at health, family, finance, and work. Now, let's rate your friendships. I'm not talking about people you already know, I mean true friends you can rely on. 
Who would help you if you were in trouble? Who would come to your funeral? Think about the number and quality of your friendships. Sometimes, having fewer but higher quality friends is more important. So what's the score? Now that you've rated your health, family, finances, professional life, and friendships, add up these five scores. Here's an example. If I gave a seven to all five areas, that's 35. Multiply by two, and I get 70. This means I'm using 70% of my potential self-confidence. Do the same. See where you're starting from. If it's 70%, it means you're using 70% of your potential. A small increase, even to 72 or 73, can make a huge difference in results. Consider this. In horse racing, the difference between first and second place might be just a nose. But the first horse is remembered forever and wins the prize. A small performance difference can result in a big outcome difference. The comparison between a poor, unsuccessful person and a rich, successful person shows they both get up and go to bed at similar times. But it's the small, consistent, strategic details that make all the difference. Now, if you find out you're operating at 60% of your potential, you might ask, how can I improve? Here's a key point I'm going to show you three things you need to do. First, develop the ability to visualize not what you don't want, but what you do want. If you focus on what you don't want, it's like driving a car while only looking in the rearview mirror. You know where you're coming from, but you don't know where you're going. Einstein said that imagination is more important than knowledge. Whenever there was a conflict between knowledge and imagination, imagination always won. So you need to learn to visualize the situation you want. It has to exist first in your mind. Here's an example. If you dream of buying a new house, you need to imagine how many rooms it will have, what it will look like, the colors of the walls, how many bedrooms and bathrooms it will have, and what furniture and carpet you'll use. The more specific you are in creating this house in your mind, the easier it will be to make it a reality because everything that exists physically was first created in someone's mind. Have you noticed that since I started talking, there's been a dialogue in your head? An inner dialogue that's talking to you all the time. You agree with some things and disagree with others. There's a voice inside your head. What does that voice sound like? Pay attention to this. Is it a friendly voice or not? Is it a friend or a critic? It might be your own voice, or it might sound like that of your father or mother. But this internal dialogue makes a huge difference in your life. When a negative dialogue appears, you have to say, cancel, cancel, cancel. Let me tell you another thing. How you carry your body matters. Go to a mall and spend some time observing people. Some people walk with their heads held high, looking straight ahead. Others walk with their heads down, looking at the ground. If a king, queen, prince, or princess walked into a room, even if you didn't know who they were, you'd notice they walked with majesty. What does it mean to have majesty? They've been taught since childhood to walk as if balancing a book on their head. When I stretch my body, imagining a hook coming from the sky pulling my head up, my neck stretches and my shoulders relax. This connection with the universe improves my self-esteem. So, to boost your self-esteem, you need to know how to visualize, handle internal dialogue, and manage your posture. This is a serious issue. Have you ever thought about how often we imagine things, whether positive or negative? If I say, think of an elephant, you're imagining in an elephant right now. If I say, don't think of a lion, even though I told you not to, you're thinking of a lion. This is because the word no has no visual representation. For example, a mother might say to her son, don't bother your little sister. But the boy continues to bother her because in his subconscious, the mother is telling him to bother her. The mother is focusing on what she doesn't want. What she should do is focus on what she really wants, which would be, son, could you please leave your sister alone? So, you need to express what you want, not what you don't want. This video will be very worthwhile for you if you learn how to control it. It will bring you immense long-term benefits. If you understand what I mean, please comment, I understood. Now I'm going to teach another very important lesson. We are judged in life by three things, your appearance, what you say, and how you say it. If someone asks you a question, how you respond makes all the difference. 
I can ask two bricklayers what they do. The first says, I'm a bricklayer. I put one brick on top of another. The second statement says, I'm also a bricklayer, but I'm building the Maracana, which is the largest football stadium in the world, and it will be here for generations. Look at the difference. Both do the same job, but one has a bigger vision. This one won't be just a bricklayer for long, he'll likely own a construction company. Second, you are judged by your appearance. If you want to play for Flamengo, don't show up in a Fluminense uniform. If you want to join the army, don't show up in shorts and a tank top. You have to dress appropriately for the occasion. If I'm teaching about success, I have to dress accordingly. It doesn't matter how you're watching this video, whether in shorts or whatever, but if I were giving this lecture in a church, for example, I couldn't be in shorts and flip-flops. I would be teaching about success, so I should be dressed in a success uniform. Appearance is very important. You are judged by what you say. Until you speak, no one knows if you're intelligent or not. But the moment you speak nonsense, there's no going back. An arrow, once launched, does not return. When a spoken word is launched, it no longer belongs to you. It's out in the world. So if you're not sure what you're going to say, it's better to stay silent. Most wise people are respected for speaking little. And it's not just what you say, it's how you say it. Two individuals can say the same thing, and the impact will be completely different. There's a saying, the singer is more important than the song. You're a fan of a great singer, right? I imagine he has a song that touches your heart. That same song, sung by a singer you don't like, wouldn't have the same impact on you. So, know what you're going to say, how you're going to say it, and choose the right time, okay? Let me show you another important piece of knowledge. Imagine you're going to bake a cake. This cake isn't made with just flour, not just butter, not just eggs. Of course, butter is important. The egg is important. They're necessary, but not enough. The success cake we're learning about has six ingredients. The first ingredient is self-confidence, the second is communication, and then come goals, attitude, hard work, and ambition. When you mix these six ingredients with patience and persistence, qualities the professional has that the amateur doesn't, you're on the right path. The amateur wants everything immediately, but nature doesn't work that way. Dawn only comes after the whole night has passed, and so on. You plant a seed, and the next day it's still a seed starting to sprout, but it's still just a seed. So it's important to understand that good things take time. Often people give up just before things start to happen. That's why patience and persistence are crucial. Now, let's talk about setting a goal. It's important to learn to turn a dream into a goal, and then we'll learn to turn a goal into reality. How do I turn a dream into a goal? I turn a dream into a goal by setting a date. Anything you want someday will never happen. So you'll have a dusty book on your shelf at home that you said you would read someday. But it's been four years since you bought it. It's still there because there's no someday on the calendar. Do you agree? To make things happen, you need to set a date. You say, one day, we'll do this. There's no day on the calendar with that name, so it will never happen. Now you have set a date. Oops. Now it makes all the difference. You must learn to set dates for your dreams. The moment you set a date for a dream, it ceases to be a dream and becomes a goal. The universe begins to work in your favor. But then you turn the dream into a goal. But you can't stop there. You have to turn it into reality. That's another story. You can't just stop. First, I want to tell you that the importance of a goal is not necessarily to achieve it, but to set you in motion, because something more important might happen along the way. Do you want to be seen? I'll prove it to you. Consider the three most important things that have happened in your life so far, if you can remember. What happened most importantly? Three events may be your wedding, the birth of your child, or a promotion at your job, passing an exam, or graduating from college. There are many important things in your life, but you'll notice that at least two or three of them were not planned. You didn't wake up one day and say, today I'm going to meet someone because I'm going to fall in love and get married. It wasn't like that. You just went somewhere, fell in love, planned and got married. And that job you have? 
You didn't wake up one day and say, today I'm going to become an employee at this company. Did it happen like that? No, you saw an advertisement. Someone invited you, you went for an interview, submitted your resume, got approved, and one day that you never imagined, someone called you and said, you start working tomorrow. Interesting. I need to have goals to put me in motion, but I also need to be prepared for better things that might come along. You need this flexibility, and this goal can't be just one thing. There needs to be diversification. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. If someone takes your basket, it's over. They take all your eggs. For example, if your only profession is being a mother, which is the noblest profession on earth, and you dedicate yourself entirely to being a mother, look at the risk you're taking. If you're a mother, one day your children will grow up. They will leave. We raise children to serve the world. They don't stay with us. They go on to live their own lives. And then what will you say? Oh, but now I feel empty. It's the empty nest syndrome. It's the mother who dedicated her entire life to her children. The children grew up and went to live their lives, and the mother feels alone. So, you need diversity. You need a financial goal, a professional goal, a social goal, a family goal, and a health goal. What's the point of earning a lot and having a heart attack at 40? Is it worth it? I won't take anything to the grave. A coffin has no drawers. A coffin has no pockets. Why earn all this money and then leave this life without enjoying it? Therefore, you need leisure goals. You need to diversify your goals. This is very important. You set a goal, and it has to be remembered. Don't just remember it on December 31st and assume it's all sorted out. No, no, no. You have to remember it every day. The Japanese have a tradition with a doll called Daruma. I don't know if you know, but they paint one eye of the doll, leaving the other eye unpainted, and they place that doll on a table. That doll symbolizes a goal, such as buying a new house. So every time they look at the doll, they remember the goal. It serves as a reminder. There are several Darumas in the room, many with both eyes painted and some with only one eye painted, because the goal has to be remembered. For example, are you studying medicine just because it's your parents' dream? No, 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 it's all wrong. Tell your father to take the entrance exam. You have to pursue a goal that is yours and that you really desire, understand? If a Japanese person said they would buy a new house, and when they buy it, they go there and paint the other eye of the doll. If you enter a Japanese person's house, you will see that there are several darumas in the room, many with both eyes painted and some with one eye painted. In 1945, Hiroshima and Nagasaki were destroyed. 40% of Japan was destroyed. Today, Japan is among the top five countries in the world. Do you know what happened? Can you guess? From 40% destroyed to among the top five countries in the world. Remember this philosophy called Kaizen, which means always improve, continuous improvement. When you say, I don't want anything else in life, I say, then it's time for you to die because you're here to learn. Or rather, when you die, when you transcend, when you change your cosmic address, and when you get there on the other side, they will ask you three questions. The first question is, what did you learn there? This is a school. We are learning. The second question is, how was your passage through planet Earth? Did you make it a better place for those who will come after you? And lastly, and most importantly, they will ask, did you spend more than you contributed, or did you contribute more than you spent? Or, rather, I recommend that you ask yourself a question when you put your head on the pillow to sleep at night. Did I cost more than I contributed? Or did I contribute more than I did today? And this today keeps adding up, keeps adding up, keeps adding up, right? Before that, it is important for you to consider this. I want to make it clear to you that life is a sequence of hellos and goodbyes. To say hello, you must say goodbye. The big hello of your life you won't remember. But when you arrived on planet Earth, you gave it to me. You came here crying, and everyone there to welcome you was smiling. I hope that when you die, when you transcend, when you change your cosmic address, it happens exactly the opposite that you leave smiling because you fulfilled your mission, and whoever stays here will be crying because you are leaving. And you have to learn to work with these six ingredients, self-esteem, 
communication, goals, hard work, attitude, and ambition. And as I said, what distinguishes the professional from the amateur is patience and persistence. I don't need to worry about my weaknesses. I need to focus on my strengths. These strengths will make my weaknesses disappear. That's the big catch. So if you're not prepared, it's no use. If I offer you 20,000 euros a month to teach German in Germany and you don't speak German, it's useless. So when you are prepared and the opportunity appears, it will appear, and most of the time it comes in the form of a problem. So when it appears and you are prepared, people call it luck. The opportunity and your readiness to seize it is luck. In other words, your luck is built by you. That person is adrift, waiting for something to happen. Nothing will happen at all. That's the big problem. Be prepared when the great opportunity comes. If you watch this video all the way through, comment like this. This is the secret of life. Just comment on that. This is the secret to life. When I see this comment, I will know that you watch this whole video. And it shows that you are a persistent and patient person. You are closer to success than those who left halfway through the video.